so in this few slides i am going to discuss how sglt2 inhibitors protect the kidney and how actually a nephron damage occurs in patients with kidney disease okay so first thing you have to understand is to understand how kidney damage occurs in diabetic patients and how sglt2 inhibitors protect us you need to understand the concept of the tubular glomerular feedback so what is tubular glomerular feedback so what happens is the body has a very fine intrinsic system which it has to protect its own kidney so at the same time kidney is also responsible for maintaining the glomerular pressure and it's also responsible for maintaining the circulating volume so whenever you have a situation let's say you have an accident and you have a fall in your arterial pressure there is less amount of blood going to the glomerular uh, system right so less blood goes to the glomeruli hence there is reduction of gfr so whenever there is a reduction of gfr proximally there is reabsorption of sodium which occurs from the kidney now because sodium is being reabsorbed less amount of sodium goes to macula densa so macula densa is the sensor which is there in the kidney so immediately macula densa senses that we are in a situation where the body is losing circulating volume or there is reduction of blood pressure so it releases a hormone which is known as renin this renin is converted to angiotensin 2 and this angiotensin 2 increases the efferent not efferent the efferent arterial vasoconstriction you know there is efferent arterial there is the glomeruli and there is the efferent arterial and there is a vasoconstriction which occurs in the efferent arterial and because of this vasoconstriction the blood stays in the glomeruli leading to increase of glomerular filtration pressure so increase there is a increase of gfr so this is the system this is what is known as a tubular glomerular feedback and this is the mechanism by which the kidney tends to maintain the circulating volume in our system right so this is the first concept we have to understand when we discuss the concept of renal uh, involvement in diabetic patients now the second point is the second problem we have to understand is what happens in diabetes patients so there are essentially two problems which happen in patients with diabetes the first problem that happens is that patients with type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes have hyperfiltration so why is there hyperfiltration there is hyperfiltration especially those people who have poorly controlled diabetes it is because of increase of igf1 which occurs in insulin resistance increase of n uh, you know glycosylated end products and sorbitol so all of these compounds they cause efferent arterial vasodilatation so again looking at the picture of the glomeruli we have the efferent and the efferent arterial and there is vasodilatation of the efferent arterial leading to more blood going to the kidney so to the glomeruli so there is more blood going to the glomeruli and because there is more blood to the glomeruli there is hyperfiltration so if you see early diabetic patients you will actually find that they have a increase of gfr why is there increase of gfr because there is hyperfiltration so this important point you have to understand in patients with diabetes is that in the early stages they tend to have increase of gfr or there is a situation of hyperfiltration now comes the picture of the glucose keeps increasing so you are in a situation where there is increase of blood glucose right so in diabetes patient there is increase of blood glucose now in order to you know uh, for the body to try to reabsorb this glucose the kidney produces there is more production of sglt2 right so sglt2 is a glucose sodium and glucose transporter so there is more sglt2 which is being formed so there is increase sodium and glucose reabsorption and remember this reabsorption takes place proximally so there is more amount of sodium and more amount of glucose which is being reabsorbed so what happens is ultimately less amount of sodium goes to the macula densa so again going to the picture of the tubular glomerular feedback what happens is because of there is increase sglt2 there is more reabsorption of sodium which occurs proximally and because there is more reabsorption of sodium there is less amount of sodium going to the macula densa leading to the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway 
so there is unfortunately a premature activation of the uh, renin angiotensin pathway again there is a problem which occurs further remember we discussed that patients with kidney problem have hyperfiltration and uh, patients with uh, diabetes have hyperfiltration and this hyperfiltration actually adds fuel to the fire so remember there is in a patient with diabetic kidney disease some glomeruli are already damaged and the remaining glomeruli are in hyperfiltration state and add to this hyperfiltration there is activation of renin angiotensin system so this actually makes more amount of pressure so it creates a vicious cycle so there is increase of gfr more amount of blood flows to the kidney to the glomeruli there is more damage to the glomeruli however at the same time the gfr continues to increase so there is a vicious cycle and this typically occur, occurs in early diabetic patients so there is loss of tubular glomerular feedback because of increase of sglt2 now what happens further the problem keeps increasing so whenever the patient goes into this vicious cycle the glomeruli keep getting damaged so rest of the work is then carried by the remaining glomeruli and add to that lot of patients with diabetes also have hypertension and hypertension also produces the same issue so hypertension increases the intraglomerular pressure so there is further increase of intraglomerular pressure leading to glomerular hypertrophy which happens because of a protective mechanism so what i discuss what typically happens so you have patients with diabetes mellitus and hypertension in diabetes mellitus there is increase of sglt2 hence there is increase glomerular filtration pressure right hypertension there is intra increase intra glomerular hypertension and hence again there is increase of glomerular filtration pressure now whenever you increase glomerular filtration pressure there is more nephron damage so ultimately these two systems go on to produce a damage to the nephron right now what happens so one of the drugs which helps in this situation is ace inhibitor right it's very simple to understand why ace inhibitor helps because ace inhibitor blocks the renin angiotensin pathway and remember the renin angiotensin pathway is activated right the ras is activated and that is the one which is leading to all the trouble which the patient has so you have a situation where the ras is activated and ace inhibitors they block the renin angiotensin pathway leading to the problem but one more drug does something miraculous in this situation and that is the sglt2 inhibitor so what sglt2 inhibitor does is it blocks the sglt2 right so going to the cycle again what happens is there is increase sglt2 in patients with diabetes so there is less amount of sodium to macula densa so there is renin angiotensin system which is activated which leads to increase of gfr further which leads to nephron damage right so ace inhibitors and arbs act at this point whereas sglt2 act much more proximal in this system here sglt2 inhibitors act right so they reduce the sglt2 so hence the tubular glomerular feedback is preserved so you know if you are ever asked by anybody how sglt2 inhibitors protect the kidney the answer is simple it is tubular glomerular feedback that is lost in diabetes patient that is restored so there is restoration of the tubular glomerular feedback and it is this restoration of tubular glomerular feedback that is how sglt2 inhibitors protect the kidney right so this is a very important point 